Hello friends. This video is brought to you by MyWayTeaching.com. Organizing data. Usually when we collect data, it is in unorganized form. Or we may say, it is a raw data. Then, we cannot make any inference from it. That is, we cannot conclude anything from the raw data. So, first thing that we need to do is to organize the data. Let us take up an example. Say we ask students in a particular class which is their favorite subject and note it down one by one. Suppose first student says art, second student tells us mathematics, third one tell us science, fourth tell us English and so on. Now from this data which is actually a raw data, if I have to find out how many students like maths then I need to count 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 4 students like maths. Then again if I have to find out how many like art, then I have to count it. Or science or maths. Instead of counting again and again, let us arrange the data. To start, we will draw a table and mark subject, tally marks and number of students. In the subject column, we will write the various subjects like we have art, maths, science. And we have English. Now let us start counting or say organizing the data. We see that first we have art. So we will mark one line in the art column. Second we have maths. So we will have one line in the math column. Then we have science. So one in the science column. English. So one in the English column. Again after that we have maths. So one dash in the maths column. And likewise we will continue for the whole data. And complete our tally mark column. Also notice that after fourth line, fifth line we have put slanting because it is easy to group them into five. Five into seven. Five and one, six. So this will help us in completing our table that is the number of students table. Next step is to count the number of lines in the tally mark and write it correspondingly in the number of student table. We find that in the art column we have 7 students, math we have 4, science we have 5 and 1, 6 and English we have 4. Now it is very easy to study this table. If somebody asks how many students like science, teacher can tell that 6 students like science in this class. Also you should know that the number of times that a particular entry occurs is also known as frequency. So this can also be called 
frequency or number of students is basically the frequency of the entry that is frequency of students who like art is 7 frequency of students who like maths is 4 frequency of students who like science is 6 and we name such a table as frequency distribution table sometimes we have to deal with large data and it is not viable to make a frequency distribution table consider an example say this is the list of marks obtained by 60 students in mathematics and maximum marks that one can obtain is 50 as the marks are out of 50 so now if we want to draw a frequency distribution table for each observation the table will be so long that it will, won't be convenient for us to make it so we use a technique called grouping the data we will make groups for instance from 0 to 10 from 10 to 20 and so on and then construct a frequency distribution table we start by constructing a table like this one column will hold the groups that we had made for our data let us write the groups we have 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 and since maximum is 50 50 to 60 next would be to complete the tally mark column for that we start with looking at the data and marking we have 21 which will lie between 20 to 30 so let us mark a bar in 20 to 30 next we have 10 which lies between 0 to 10 and also between 10 to 20 then since it is not possible that an observation can belong simultaneously to two classes to avoid this we adopt the convention that the common observation will belong to the higher class that means 10 will belong to 10 to 20 class so we put a bar here next entry is 30 again 30 belongs to 20 to 30 and 30 to 40 but we will use the convention that the common observation will belong to the higher class hence it will belong to 30 to 40 mark next observation is 22 this belongs to 20 to 30 mark we put a bar here and similarly continuing we will get the table like this and now it remains to complete the frequency column of this table we have two marks in the tally column hence 2 then we have 10 then we have 5 plus 5 10 15 20 21 next we have 19 next is 7 and lastly 1 that means that two st students scored between 0 to 10 marks 10 students 
scored between 10 to 20, 21 between 20 to 30, 19 students between 30 to 40 and 7 students between 40 to 50 and only one student scored between 50 to 60 means complete 50 marks. Let us take out the total of the frequency then total will come out to be 60 and that implies that we have not missed any entry from the data. Note that such a table is called grouped frequency distribution table. The groups 0 to 10, 10 to 20 and so on are called class intervals. We say 0 to 10 is a class interval. Similarly, 10 to 20 is also a class interval and so on. Then if 20 to 30 is a class interval, 20 is called lower class limit and 30 is called upper class limit. That means in 20 to 30, 20 is the lower class limit and 30 is the upper class limit. Similarly, in 0 to 10, 0 is the lower class limit and 10 is the upper class limit. And lastly, we define the width, which is also called the size of the class interval. That is the upper class limit minus lower class limit. Means upper class limit 30 minus 20, that is 10 or from any interval we can take 20 minus 10 is also 10 so in this case our width or size is equal to 30 minus 20 that is equal to 10 hence the size of our class interval is 10 